activity automatically reminds each man of his own multidimensional reality. The words, know thyself, therefore, mean far more than most people ever suppose. In moments of solitude, you may become aware of some of these other streams of consciousness. These other existences of yours go on quite merrily, whether you are waking or sleeping, but while you are awake, ordinarily you block them out. In the dream state, you are much more aware of them, although there is a final process of dreaming that often masks intense psychological and psychic experience. Unfortunately, what you usually recall is this final dream version, some dreams themselves do take place in psychic or mental areas connected with your daily activities, but in the very deep reaches of sleep experience, those, incidentally, not yet touched upon by scientists in so-called dream laboratories, you are in communication with other portions of your own identity and with the other realities in which they exist. Some waking states, of course, come very close to sleep states. These blend one into the other so that the rhythm often goes unnoticed. These gradations of consciousness are accompanied by changes in the physical organism. In the more sluggish periods of waking consciousness, there is a lack of concentration, a cutting off of stimuli to varying degrees, an increase in accidents, and generally a lower body tone. Because of your habits of an extended sleep period, followed by an extended waking period, you do not take advantage of these rhythms of consciousness. The high peaks are to some extent smothered or even go unnoticed. The sharp contrast and the high efficiency of the natural waking consciousness is barely utilized. Two sleep periods of three hours apiece would be quite sufficient for most people if the proper suggestions were given before sleep, suggestions that would ensure the body's complete recuperation. There are many variations, in fact, that would be better than your present system. Ideally, sleeping five hours at a time, you gain the maximum benefit, and anything else over this time is not nearly as helpful. Those who require more sleep would then take, say, a two-hour nap. For others, a four-hour sleep session and two naps would be highly beneficial. I am giving you all of this material here because it will help you understand and use your present abilities. You are asking too much of normal waking consciousness, smoothing out the valleys and peaks of its activity, demanding in some cases that it go full blast ahead when it is actually at a minimal period, denying yourself the great mobility of consciousness that is possible. In some cases, you literally force yourself to sleep when your consciousness could be at one of its maximum points. This is, incidentally, in the pre-dawn period. In certain afternoon hours, consciousness is lowered and needs refreshment that is instead denied to it. If the stages of waking consciousness were examined as sleep stages are presently being examined, for example, you would find a much greater range of activity than is suspected. Certain transition stages are completely ignored. In many ways it can be said that consciousness does indeed flicker and varies in intensities. It is not like a steady beam of light. A clear, uncluttered, bright, and powerful consciousness needs frequent rest periods if its efficiency is to be maintained and if it is to correctly interpret reality. Otherwise, it distorts what is perceived. Now, Seth speaks of death and after-death experiences. What happens at the point of death? The question is much more easily asked than answered. Basically, there is not any particular point of death in those terms, even in the case of a sudden accident. I will attempt to give you a practical answer to what you think of as this practical question, however. What the question really means to most people is this. What will happen when I am not alive in physical terms any longer? What will I feel? Will I still be myself? Will the emotions that propelled me in life continue to do so? Is there a heaven or a hell? Will I be greeted by gods or demons, enemies or beloved ones? Most of all, the question means, when I am dead, will I still be who I am now, and will I remember those who are dear to me now? First of all, let us consider the fact just mentioned. There is no separate, indivisible, specific point of death. Life is a state of becoming, 
and death is a part of this process of becoming. You are alive now, a consciousness knowing itself, sparkling with cognition amid a debris of dead and dying cells, alive while the atoms and molecules of your body die and are reborn. You are alive, therefore, in the midst of small deaths. Portions of your own image crumble away moment by moment and are replaced, and you scarcely give the matter a thought. So you are to some extent alive now in the midst of the death of yourself, alive despite and yet because of the multitudinous deaths and rebirths that occur within your body in physical terms. If the cells did not die and were not replenished, the physical image would not continue to exist. So now in the present, as you know it, your consciousness flickers about your ever-changing corporeal image. In many ways you can compare your consciousness as you know it now to a firefly, for while it seems to you that your consciousness is continuous, this is not so. It also flickers off and on, though it is never completely extinguished. Its focus is not nearly as constant as you suppose, however. So as you are alive in the midst of your own multitudinous small deaths, so though you do not realize it, you are often dead, even amid the sparkling life of your own consciousness. There are overall rhythms, and within them an infinity of individual variations, almost like cosmic metabolism. In these terms, what you call death is simply the insertion of a longer duration of that pulsation of which you are not aware, a long pause in that other dimension, so to speak. The death, say, of physical tissue is merely a part of the process of life as you know it in your system, a part of the process of becoming. And from those tissues, as you know, new life will spring. All through your lifetime, portions of your body die, and the body that you have now does not contain one particle of physical matter that it had, say, ten years ago. This process, you see, continues so smoothly that you are not aware of it. The pulses mentioned earlier are so short in duration that your consciousness skips over them merrily, yet your physical perception cannot seem to bridge the gap when the longer rhythm of pulsation occurs. And so, this is the time that you perceive as death. What you want to know, therefore, is what happens when your consciousness is directed away from physical reality, and when momentarily it seems to have no image to wear. You will find yourself in another form, an image that will appear physical to you to a large degree, as long as you do not try to manipulate within the physical system with it. Then the differences between it and the physical body will become obvious. You will simply be learning to operate in a new environment in which different laws apply, and the laws are far less limiting than the physical ones with which you now operate. In other words, you must learn to understand and use new freedoms. Even these experiences will vary, however, and even this state is a state of becoming, for many will continue into other physical lives. Some will exist and develop their abilities in different systems of reality altogether, and so for a time will remain in this intermediary state. For those of you who are lazy, I can offer no hope. Death will not bring you an eternal resting place. You may rest, if this is your wish, for a while. Not only must you use your abilities after death, however, but you must face up to yourself for those that you did not use during your previous existence. Now, when I speak to you, I very seldom use such words as love. I do not tell you that a god is waiting for you on the other side of a golden door. I do not reassure you by telling you that when you are dead, God will be waiting for you in all his majestic mercy, and that that will be the end of your responsibility. However, through traveling within yourselves, you will discover the unity of your consciousness with other consciousnesses. You will discover the multidimensional love and energy that gives consciousness to all things. This will not lead you to want to rest upon the proverbial blessed bosom. It will instead inspire you to take a better hand in the job of creation. That feeling of divine presence you will find indeed and feel indeed for you will sense it behind the dance of the molecules and in yourselves and in your neighbors. 